Julie Cruikshank with Daily Extra. I'm here today with Vivek Anand with the Humsafar Trust. Vivek, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Julie. So Vivek, obviously an exciting and interesting time for India right now with the Supreme Court just uh, recognizing full legal rights for transgender individuals. What is that ruling going to mean for the day-to-day -day work that you do at the Humsafar Trust? Very frankly, you know, the Supreme Court judgment that has come out legalizing the existence and recognizing third gender, transgender as the third gender in the country. So like in future, obviously this will have to go through a process and there would be like plannings that would have to be done. But transgenders would be recognized as the third gender. So like in all official documents, you would have male, female and the third gender. Okay. So people who recognize themselves as third gender would be able to take on that. That would certainly mean more employment opportunities, that would certainly mean education opportunities, that would certainly mean more equality in the society. But unfortunately, uh, they still continue to be governed by Section 377. Mm -hmm. So while transgenders do get recognized as third gender, they can't have sex because if they're having sex, they could get booked under 377. Okay. Right, which seems like quite the contradiction. Which is. Yeah. It is. I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of very contradictory because on one hand we are living with Section 377, which is like a British law which came into India in 1860 and criminalizes homosexual behavior. So if you have like two men having sex with each other, that's illegal. But on the other hand, you know, you're recognizing a third gender, you're giving them all the rights and then you're not giving them the right to have sex. So do you think with the Supreme Court ruling and given India's uh, focus on marriage as an institution, do you think that we're any likely or that the Supreme Court is any likelier to look at finally repealing second th Section 377 in favor of maybe marriage equality? So one is certainly looking that the transgender judgment, you know, the third gender judgment that came out of Supreme Court will work in favor and we are hopeful. See, Julie, you have to understand one thing, you know, when we talk about equality, first thing, first things first, it's decriminalization. You know, unless your existence is decriminalized, unless, you know, you say that, okay, you know, you are an equal citizen, the conversation begins at that point. It is at that point of time, you know, we start talking about marriage, we start talking about adoption, we talk, start talking about discrimination at workplace. Today, if like, you know, I'm working somewhere, I'm being discriminated at workplace or I'm facing violence in my family or in the society, I do not have any law, I do not have recourse to any police action. There's nothing that I can do about it. So with the criminal ruling in place, what has that meant for the work that you do with HIV AIDS and harm reduction? I mean, that must be very difficult in light of the circumstances. In 2009, it was decriminalized. In 2013, you were recriminalized. So I've clearly seen the difference between two different phases. I've seen our HIV prevention without 377 and with 377. What happens with 377 in force is that your outreach programs become difficult. Your outreach workers, when they're distributing condoms, they're at a risk of being caught by the cops and antisocial elements, that you're spreading homosexuality, that you're promoting sex. You can be booked. People may not get booked under Section 377, but you get picked up. There is always that threat, you know, we'll take you there. But most importantly, like, you know, Hamsafa manages seven clinics in the city. We have got clinicians who work with us. So many times our doctors come to us, they have asked us this question. That tomorrow, if some gay man gets picked up by the police and he says, I'm accessing services from Hamsafar, can they come to us and tell us that we were alibis in crime? Right. That we knew that a criminal activity was happening and we did not inform the police? And very honestly, we don't have an answer. We've tried to take an opinion from various experts, but it does demotivate professionals. It does demotivate outreach work. It does affect your condom. And, and it's not that you're going to stop doing it. You will continue doing it. But the element of fear is always looming large. So on the subject of, of morale and kind of continuing with the work that you do, one thing that Humsafar is known for is staging public flash mobs. And you actually staged a public same-sex wedding. Can you tell me a bit about that? So this year, after the Supreme Court ruling, you know, uh, we designed this flash mob which brought like, you know, about four Bollywood songs together and about like 50 or 60 young LGBT dancing at a railway station, which is like one of the most crowded railway platforms. There are like thousands of people looking at it. And in the middle of the flash mob, uh, we have this young gay couple, you know, these two women. We got them together. We got them married in public view. And the whole ceremony happened. It took like about two minutes. and. Uh, like my younger sister, she actually came and she blessed the couple and you know, this wedding is performed. It was in view of thousands of people and believe me, it was wonderful. Yeah, 
you know it was it was absolutely an amazing moment for all of us because we were doing this and it was a very thought of thing you know that we say no to section 377 i mean we say no to the supreme court judgment because you cannot criminalize my existence well vivek thank you so much for t- for speaking with us today thank you so much